All right, we are out here on Seven Tree Pond, and uh, there is a mythically large pike supposedly here. Kind of like this one here caught by the guys of Fishing for Adventure elsewhere in Maine. They nailed this really large 20 pound pike and that's the rumor I'm chasing today. I've heard from several people that they've caught a 15, 10, and even a 20 pound pike that just sits at the bottom here of Seven Tree Pond scarfing up all the smaller fish. <laughs> I haven't, you know, just keep, I've heard about it from the warden, I've heard about it from residents, um, and I did hook onto something. I'm down at the far end where I've always wanted to be, um, and it's it's hard to get here. So I actually came on from a friend's property because there's that the two rivers that come in, they always block it. That's why I made the hovercraft years ago, so I might be able to come down this end. Um, instead I cheated because I never finished the hovercraft uh, the mark II version with a bigger fan and propulsion system So I could cross the water there was an ice bridge that's gone now ever since uh, John filmed that this morning and uh, When I was down here once though Trolling with a big pink spoon. I hooked onto something huge down in here in the middle in this really deep part and It was just like boom out of the water. It was it was giant so I think these guys are telling the truth, but people aren't pulling them out of here on a regular basis. And we're gonna camp out, see if we can catch, catch one of these mythical pikes. And I got this cool, really cool, Krua. It is an insulated tent. Not to be confused with Cruella, who wanted to use 101 Dalmatian hides to keep herself warm. Not enough. We need 102, this time. I want a hooded spotted puppy coat. With the Krua color line of insulated tents, you can enjoy the warmth of a puppy's embrace while you sleep in the cool outdoors without all the cruelty. And they are the sponsor for today's video and this hunt for the mythical pike out on Seven Tree. And guess what? You guys can get a tent. There's a link in the description below for a landing page they created for us so that you guys could go, you sign up, and you win a, or get a chance to win one of their really cool Krua tents. Check out that link in the description below for the Krua insulated tent. These things are so cool. Or should I say hot when it's cold out, that's for sure. If you go to the link in the description now, you can sign up to win one free. We're going to do a drawing in one week during our big live stream. And I'm going to play with it tonight, spend the night in it. I made a cool little candle heater so that um, I can be warm. We're going to see how warm and comfy I can be while I stay out here and then hit the ice again uh, first thing in the morning since it took me so long to prepare all of my stuff and, you know, playing around with uh, setting up some new pike jigs for uh, putting my bait on. And I got myself some big old baits in here. Good, it's working now. It almost wasn't working. I thought I was going I got way too much, way too much bait for this little bucket. The darn pump was all froze up, but I figured out how to fix it. So, we got some food. We could do some cooking, camping, and uh, see if we can't catch this mythically large pike or maybe some crappie or something new to add to my uh, yearly, this year's list of different species. I'm going to punch a couple holes. I did stop at a spot now that uh, Greg and I had visited earlier this year or close to it we caught some crappy crappy over there um, with the pirate ship but I know there's a push-up right here and I'm picturing the pike coming around through this bowl in here pushing uh, crappy and uh, white perch up and scarfing the small baby ones up I thought I'd just stop off here check things out for now and if I want to come back to this spot in the morning if I get lucky and get something really quick here or uh, and then we'll head over and set up camp for the night on the island and that's the same island I did my uh, so I'm really close to home here I did my uh, island survival challenge from the uh, Dollar General Still need to make a uh, nice spot for this to go. Alright, nothing.
see, seven tree islands looking good. It does look a little thinner around the edges, but maybe that's just the sun on the rocks. Moved over here now. I punched a bunch of holes and I didn't see anything. I didn't go everywhere I wanted to. I was really hoping to be here first thing this morning. And it always takes me so long to pack because I'm always making stuff. I'm like, ooh, how about if I make a little of this? How about if I make a little of that for the adventure? And then I rigged this up. Like I said in the last one, I spend, I spend three quarters of my time making things. And then, uh, oh, we got some sort of a cat or a coyote. Hard to tell the snow's kind of blown in on it a little. All right, that one looks good. And the wind was coming from over there, so I can sit right here and have my little, I got a little camp stove from Solo Stove and I'll sit right here. Is there somewhere I can, I don't remember if there's an open enough spot for the tent. Or if I even need to put it up here. I might just put it out on the ice. Hey, this is my old fire pit from that same day. There, the uh, Dollar General. I can sit here at least, out of the wind. I think I'll set some traps. It's a little shallower, kind of point of rocks going out, so maybe there's some trout. And then I did mark something just over there. So maybe I'll put some with the bells on them right here so I can fish right up into the dark while I sit over here and set up the tent and stuff. Yeehaw. So you've got a destination, or a home for the night at least. Oh no, that's, that's snow. It's totally snowing. How did I miss that? I was looking at the temperatures and stuff so much for the weather and I don't remember it's supposed to be snow, so that's where we are. All right, I'll put a couple out here in the shallow point and then I'll go out here right where it gets a bit deeper, just out from where I'll be staying, that I can keep an eye on them. Maybe uh, something there, see if there's a, maybe I'll put two for pike, two for trout, and uh, and then set something a little bit right there, like the rod one, right there. Yikes, that is super thin. That's three inches. All right, that was not what I was thinking I'd find. Time to get out of here. Kit. Let's see how to set this thing up. Oh, they sent me a cool little hat. I'll wear that as my nightcap hat. <laughs> oh, I got a flag. That was one of my pike sets. No, nothing. This was a set thing that I tried with the 
Maybe I didn't do it right. Right, what do we got here? Patches, instructions. I like to do these things kind of on the fly because check for flags. Uh, you know, if I just practice at this before you guys see stuff like this, I, I like to like kind of rate stuff as like easy first time use. Like what's the, what's the story, you know? Is it uh, painful or super easy? All right, it's just a traditional tent, this part. Looks good there. I'll keep that out just in case I do need it, but I don't think I need a regular tent part set up. I do like it comes right there with patches without getting crazy and reading the instructions. I'm just gonna try to wing it. People, when they send me their stuff and they see me just winging it without really going into the instructions, they must be like, oh my goodness, what the, what did we, what did we get ourselves into? <laughs> I will go back to the instructions, but the whole point, like I said, <laughs> of setting something up without going too crazy into the instructions, outside of a quick glance this time, is to see, hey, is this easy, painful? My, uh, give it a fair shake. Because I personally think that anybody that comes up with something, a tent, something else, it should work the same as pretty much everybody else's without extra complicated parts making it impossible to use. Unless you're like a, a genius of some sort, you know? It's a little narrower than I thought, like a nice two person. I wonder if I can set it up there. I mean, I have ice screws I, could, I thought about putting this in with, but as thin as this is, I don't want water coming up through even just a little bit. I remember there being more space because I slept right in this little like goose trail here when I did the uh, Dollar General challenge. And that's all I took up, is that little, boom, one flat spot. Got the little sticks. Pluck right out. blow up and it goes inside probably could have totally brought a pump would have been great I wonder if that other bag has a pump huh little sleeping bag okay nice I brought my sleeping bag but I wonder if this will be enough when I'm in an insulated thing in the first place but I didn't bring a pump there's where you should have read the instructions first, but I think I can blow it up. Right. Definitely not going to be able to get it as full as a pump could get it. But I'm sure I can get it enough that it'll be fine. That was a mistake, not bringing a pump. It's pretty close. I mean, it's all pumped all the way up through. And let's see, inside, it's sprung. There we go. I think I'll leave the vents, one of the vents open, because I'm gonna have like a little candle stove in here. Oh, I see. They don't close up 100% tight, so if I do close them up, there's still gonna be a little bit of air that gets out, which is good. You don't wanna suffocate in here. I like it. This is really well insulated. I mean, this is pretty cool. Insulated, blown up, perfect. All right, all set up. That looks good. 
I like it. I'll be nice and warm tonight. Now, I've got to try and jig something up because I don't think any of my sets have gone off. They got the little lights on them, so they'd be blinking if they did. Except for these two. We'll check that, and then I'll pull one so I can jig and see if I can't catch something for dinner. Nothing there. And nothing on that one over there. Well, there's still a good chance at a bite since there's crappie in here. Let's pull one of those traps so I can run another rod and jig for dinner. See if something smaller is down there that wouldn't bite that. Something catchable. I see other baits. See if we can find something a little bigger. Oh, there's some nice sized fish in there. Let's see if we can get them. That's a nice looking something or other. fish down there, five feet off. That's what we want. Ah, that's what I needed, dump it right in the water. Oh, there's a suspended mark right there. That's right there. That's a crappy up off the bottom like that. Let's get him. Let's get him. Come on. Oh, it's so close. Oh, no bite. Let's see. What else can we put on to get that bite? Oh, something's coming in. Oh, that looks like something's right on it. We got something on it. Oh, the rod's stuck in there. Fish on, fish on. Yep, there we go. Ha ha. Oh, I bet you that's just like a, that could be a crappy, but I think it's a big white perch. Be my guess, that's. Or a bass. I haven't actually fished this spot almost ever, so. Hey, she's putting up a fight. Get a look at her. Oh my goodness! That's a monster! Oh, look at the size of that! <laughs> look at the size of that white perch! Holy moly! Oh my goodness! That's whoa! That is almost my record white perch right there. That thing is huge. Ah, broke off. On the littlest jig head, like can you, probably can't even see it. Just the tiniest with a little grub. I mean, that's my go-to right there. Look at the size of the big old white perch. Yeehaw, we got dinner. Uh, just for the heck of it. I'm gonna see, let's, let's see. That's a monster, 1.4. That's insane. That is, that means that, that probably means that that last one I caught when I was with Abby, that giant green one was uh, over two pounds or something. So, we'll dispatch him since it is still early. The old throat rip. There we go. There's another one coming in. 
Well, now that I've caught one, I don't want to stop. You know how it is. They're like, oh, fishy, fishy. Let's see. What else we got? Tie on a uh, bigger jig head with one of these. One of my jigs here. We got some new glow ones we're testing out to see if these will uh, actually be good. There we go. We got our little guy on here. All charged up. There you go. You see him glowing? There we go. That'll do it, huh? One will have to do. That's more than enough to eat. Let's see, what do we got? Oh, don't nail all the rocks. That doesn't feel good. That's the pots and pans. We're not gonna cook. Still, we get a fire. Dry bag full of pellets. Just the old uh, home heating pellet. Throw those in there. There we go. Hungry after all this, a little cheese peely snack and do up my fish. My heating ring works pretty good, it's kind of warm all around here. These are the good ones, too. These are the Elsa frozen ones, perfect for tonight. Who knew it? Disney makes string cheese as well. All right, we'll prep up some vegetables. First time I've eaten white purge since uh, Waterworld. There are fish tacos there. So if you're thinking like, man, he eats a lot of freshwater fish, it might seem that because if you watch one video after the next, it's like, wow, you eat a fish again, you eat a fish again. And, but it's like a week to two weeks in between each time, you know? Well, outside of last week was definitely the, the smell, but I mean, those are tasty little things. That was a really poorly done, but that's more than enough. And I'll take that home for the lobster traps.
heater going and I have my food in here. This seems dangerous. There, doesn't that look roomy? All nice and getting warm in here. Go get my food. Oh yeah, that's better. Is it edible? Mm. That's perfect. Done. Hot sauce. My dinner. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. A little light for the old. Ah, yeehaw! Oh yeah. Right. Get in, get zipped in, see what that's like. Right. Zip that up. Okay. I'll zip that screen up just because it dangles otherwise. Yeehaw! Oh, I should have heated up the water in my water bottle. I don't think I'm going to need it. It already feels pretty warm enough that I lose some of this stuff. I want some green onions on top to make it extra, extra good. You know what I really ought to do if I'm going to use this again, because these eight hour candles, it's like, that's perfect. I only sleep for like seven hours usually, but um, I noticed that testing it at home, these liquefy all the way across and they keep burning. So if you tip that liquid, um, they could flare up more because of the, the wick. And already I can see that there's only like one good spot for this and that's a little closer to me than I'd care for it, but I think I'll be okay. I'm pretty spatially aware when it comes to sleeping. So I don't think I'll would roll over and hit it and burn to death, but uh, don't copy me uh, just in case because uh, you never know how spatially aware you are until you roll over into a pile of candles and burn to death, which would not be good. So let's chop these little bad boys up. Put some green onions on top. I have to say already, I do like this better. It's like a it's like a pop-up igloo. It's like an instant igloo. You know, still feels, wow, when I put my hand up underneath there, I could feel the cool air outside. But I could, almost feels like it's getting warmer by the second in here. Got some green onions on there. All right, let's see, Grace. Lord, thank you for this food. Thank you for the giant perch. Thank you for the warm tent and the, uh, just another fun adventure in your outdoors. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, I brought in, where'd it go? I brought the hot sauce with me. I'm gonna eat this without the hot sauce, am I? <laughs> yeah, I almost ate it without my hot sauce. Woo, yeah. Wow, unlike in my house when I was testing this, Oh, I can feel like a ton of warmth coming from all around it. Already I can tell that like if I'm in my sleeping bag, you know, that this is like more than warm enough in here to be comfortable. Mm. I really dislike the wind. Have I told you guys that before? Well, living all those many years up in the woods, you know, first, you know, before alone, I had a camper with like a garage tent building I built out of lash together logs and the shrink wrap plastic like I've used on my projects. You've seen me cover the uh, the arch with it where we were working. And then um, at the lake, our little garage tent I built there to store all my stuff in during the winter time. And the lash together joints, they were like uh, cuts like that and then lashing. I think I have something from a video to show you a clip there. And the whole building was built like that, stick built 
kind of out of like four inch poles from the woods. And uh, the wind would blow and that thing would be like, ba-boom, ba-boom, ba-boom. And it was just a little bit of wind like this. And it was so, caused so much anxiety because I never knew if it was like, is that the one that, is the next one gonna be a little faster? And it's gonna rip the thing apart and I'm gonna, you know, I, it would be so windy at times. I thought I'd come out there and I'd find it. Like, just the camper and that thing blown away and it never did. Everything I built was strong enough, but it created so much anxiety me over the years of living in that and then the yurt and the wind blowing on it. Is that going to blow away? Is that going to get damaged? You know, you're in there and the wind blow. Whenever it was a blowy day or a rainy and windy day, you're so in the outdoor and the element, you didn't know something would start to leak a little bit, something would start to you know blow or the door would break because it blew open and you know there's always something but then again my anxiety over the wind is not nearly what it used to be too because i mean i've survived through so many times you know hammock tied in the tree and the um up there with the wood of beardsman and then uh, the tree blowing over in the night and all that and having to tie that tree to another tree so i could keep sleeping in my hammock in the end i think i as much as it, it kind of annoys me and I'm like, uh, uh, is it, did I pin the tent down enough? I, I've also got to the point where I'm like in bed and even if I didn't get it right, I'm just like, whatever. I'm going to sleep. Well, I nailed it. I mean, you'd never know that was bacon and perch and, you know. Hmm. So good. That little bag of, uh, of jasmine rice for the win. That stuff's pretty good. Like, that's the way to go when you're camping. Like, other times I brought rice with me and cooked it up and made a pot of it. But just to, like, toss it in there and stir fry it up, already pre made, that is epic. I'm so glad I brought that. This is so good. I've made so many, um, like, fancy things. This is better than the last fancy thing I made. I think I'm gonna go to bed. I'm not sure what to do in the morning. I really wanted to fish that other end and get that pike, but I am a little comfortable here. If I stay right here, I can set some traps out there and uh, maybe catch those bigger crappie I saw coming through. And maybe there's still a pike here so I can move around and punch some more holes. See if I can find a pike. Or some crappy to bring home to the girls or have for breakfast. Crappy, crappy eggs, crappy and eggs tomorrow. <sighs> I keep seeing those little, I thought it was stupid. I'm like, oh, you know, you got your breath. You could just blow things up. What's the big deal? I brought a blow up mattress. I don't even think I can blow this whole thing up. I'm going to like blow my whole breath out of my brains before I can. Is that the plug spot? This plug isn't even in here. Oh, well, that gets me out of having to blow that up. All right, never mind. I'm just going to sleep uncomfortably on uh, whatever we got going on. Oh, man, this is lumpy. Oh, this is going to be a one of those move around till you find the halfway decent-ish spot. That's an... All right, well, that gets me out of blowing that up. Let's see, how do I get out of this thing? Ugh. At home, I just peel myself out and I keep the boots attached straight to the, the uh, ice pants. I think I can do the same here. Oh, this is lumpy. I screwed up not bringing a foamy of some kind. Oh, there we go. These boots are hard to get out of. There we go. Rated for zero. So we're not at zero, we're at 23, which means that in just a regular tent, in a regular tent that wasn't insulated, you'd be pushing it. You want like a 20 degree buffer, uh, as far as I'm concerned. You could survive a night in a zero degree bag at zero degrees in like a zero in a tent, but it's not comfortable. But 
I would say a 20 degree buffer. So I think tonight I'll be like super duper warm in here because this is insulated. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, insulated tent, well, you know, I live somewhere warm. I go camping in the summertime, all that stuff, right? But like, even during the summertime, like when uh, we did Waterworld 1 and we had the insulated ice shack, it was so nice, kind of insulate you, uh, insulates you from the heat of the day. And I might go to Florida uh, soon and uh, I bring this and see if I can't get the little AC that goes in here. Pump a little battery powered AC to make it through the night because Florida's hot. I don't like the hot. I like the cold. All right, I'm gonna go to bed. My little candle thing is going. And uh, quite a bit of heat from it. Not uh, super hot in here, but I can still see my breath, which I find a comfortable sleeping temperature. And uh, I'll be going to bed and uh, oh, hopefully getting a little bit of sleep. And be up in uh, seven hours and set those traps out again before the uh, sun comes out. So I'm gonna have to toss and turn a whole bunch. I can tell it already, just on a bunch of stuff. Ugh. I feel like Yoda, and he's like getting into bed that last time before he disappears. Ugh. 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 Twilight is upon me, and soon light must fall. There is another. What? What was that? Sky. Your sister. Whatever he said. I haven't watched that original one in so long. It's not so bad. Okay, it's bad. It's not good. This is all downhill that way. This humps up, but then it dives off that way. So it's not even like I could stay up there. I feel like I'm sliding down. This is gonna be a, a interesting night's sleep with no cushion. Well, I've slept on uh, worse places, like couches underneath the couch cushions in the middle of winter when I was a teenager and didn't want to obey my parents and ran away from home. I was thinking about that this week. And uh, yeah, that wasn't fun. Don't recommend it. Seven hours later. <laughs> oh, good morning. A little candle heater went out at 4.45. I got the full eight hours. I had these little tea lights in here. And holy cow, it is. 11 to 10 degrees out. I can feel the difference. Let me get out of this. Let me get bundled up, get out there. Put some new uh, sets out. See what we can catch this morning. Make some breakfast, hang out. It's gonna be a good morning. Get all bundled up and get out there. Just gonna bundle right to the hilt. I got a feeling. I got a feeling it's gonna be a cold, cold feel to it out there. All right, let's go. Let's do this. Oh boy, it is colder. It's a lot colder out here. Wait, that. I love that thing. I love that. That is so cool. That is so cool. Or so warm. It is so cold out here. It is. Oh, it's freezing. It's so freezing. And then that was so warm in there. <laughs> That's so cool. I'm going to have, I can't wait to go to Florida next month. That's, there's going to be, that's going to be awesome. I, I got to get one of those little teeny ACs that go in them. And, uh, I'll be nice and uh, sleeping pretty comfortably. Yeehaw.
It is cold. This hand's getting cold. Get a fire going. Get some warm coffee into me. Get ourselves some warm coffee. <laughs> A little bit of grass and then pellets on top, that should do it. So, got one, two for the pike, and then over here I put like the same holes as last yesterday, and then one more close up here. Be nice to catch something good, get something big, anything. Beggars can't be too big, crappy, big white perch again. Uh, we're in massive bass. Massive bassin. <laughs> Yesterday's fish is good and solid now. Put that in the sled so I can take that for the lobster traps like I was saying. Set up my tripod. Ah. Uh. Still no flags. I'm gonna have to go punch another hole or two once my coffee's hot. So I can find where these fishies are. It looks like there's an ice that's open water all over there and a big line. So I wonder if, it looks like there's another line half of between me and there. And that might be like the last freeze. So it's probably dangerous to go beyond that point, but might be able to right around the end of the island here. That looks so cool. Oh, coffee's already starting to steam. Says that it's still 10 degrees out here. Oy vey. Uh, it's hot. Just gotta put it in a different cup just to cool it off a little bit. I heated it up so fast over that. Electric cup here. <laughs> It'll tell me when it's the right temperature. Just cold enough so that when I pour it into my little battery powered cup, that the cup is cold, it'll cool off my coffee to perfect drinking temperature. But the thermal thing on the inside will uh, keep it heated to that perfect drinking temperature. Talk about spoiled, huh? <laughs> I remember when I um, first started doing YouTube and stuff, there's a lot of naysayers that, that are like, I'd have my coffee and I'd go into the woods for that 87 day series and I'd have my coffee from the gas station. And they're like, you hipster! And I, I, it doesn't, most stuff doesn't bother me. People can say whatever they want, I'm happy with doing my thing. <laughs> and they, but I, I, the, the hipster thing, that got to me at the time. <laughs> And it's like, I am about as far from a hipster as can be. Redneck, Vermonter, through and through. I don't know why that got to me so bad. It's just something about it. I guess because I, I thought of hipster, in my mind, was, was a, a poser, you know. Like, I was just making videos of what my life looked like, you know. There's nothing posery about it. Living in the woods for... I don't know how many years, 15 years or 12 years, 12, something around 12 years before going on alone, before I finally moved back out of the woods and into the house and stuff. <clears throat> Dragging all my supplies up into that property almost a, like half a mile or more on my back 
for years and never even buying a snowmobile or nothing. Just sleds and backpacks and dragging stuff up in there. And then when summer was there and there certain times of year, you could drive the vehicle up there. Oh yeah, that's nice. That's perfect. <laughs> All right. I think we got to go out there and deal with this because, like I was saying, that thermocline must have pushed down so far that it uh, it pushed them back out to deeper water. At least the perch and the crappie and stuff. We'll go punch some holes. Pull one of the traps. Go punch some holes. Set one of them further out, and then shift the others. Let's see if there we go. It's half loaded with pellets. Let's see if that all the ones on the bottom were super coalified and glowing red so if that takes back off and burns long enough for me to go out there do my thing and stuff and mess around and come back in let's see if we can't find those fishies saying the transducer is too cold and if I get it in the water there we go now she's reading fishy fishy where are you there we go Yeah, she's warming up after a use. That's good. Good to know. A fish. That's nothing worth. All right, back towards home. Let's see. I didn't gas it up before I left because I knew I had the gas can on the side. Better put some gas in it. I don't want to run out and then have to try to get it start in the cold. There we go. Oh. That's it. Top right up. <laughs> I'm so stiked. This is the, this thing's so cool. I wanted to do this to the old one I had, like put the uh, tank on it and the fishing poles and stuff. But with this plastic cover, the way this one has, this is so much better. Like I, I would have been a pain in the neck to that canvas cover, trying to mount things and creating plates. And this is so sweet. Oh, what a fun rig. Make some cowboy coffee. Oop. Cowboy coffee. off the bottom. I wonder if my eggs are frozen. <laughs> Might be easier to make a hard boiled egg than a, a reggie. Spam. Eggs. Keep it simple. Want to do the bacon? Eh, I'll just do spam and egg. There we go. Oh, can't even see. Boiling away, I think it's done. All right, clean the rice pan out and we can cook. Not out. Cowboy coffee. There we go. All right. Oh, that's good. Yeehaw. We got our spam single serving. I thought that was cool. 
Not sure if it is, but we'll see. Sizzle, sizzle. Didn't bring butter, so maybe I'll just have to cook up that last piece of bacon to oil the pan. That spam's just gonna stick. A little bit of charcoal in the bottom of your pan doesn't hurt. I know somebody's gonna have to leave it in the comments to disagree with that. Oh, that charcoal in the bottom of your pan, that's cancer. From all the years of boat building and hardly ever wearing a mask and grinding and sanding teak and things like that before I started doing this, you know, full time, I'm pretty sure it's too late. I heard it said once that a uh, man of God is invincible until God decides to take him home. And that's how I feel. Like I trust in the Lord for for everything. And, uh, but, you know, should you decide to step in front of a bus, obviously God's gonna be like, I'm taking you home. You're a bonehead. There we go. That seems like it's a little bit greasier over on that side of the pan. I got a feeling at 10 degrees, I should have put him in the tent with me. Oh, I can see it already. The egg, <laughs> it's got a big old crack in it. She's uh, definitely froze and expanded. This one didn't break, maybe this one's better. Let's see. Oh, my goodness, <laughs> it's so wild. Look at that, it's all crystallized. Can I get it out of here? <laughs> the white stayed in. I guess I'm having a yolk. Maybe I'll do see if the other one does the same. Just have two cooked yolks and a piece of... Wow, that one's impossibly hard. How did one freeze solid? I wonder if I could still cook it. Frozen hard boiled instead of hard boiled. Oh my goodness, that's wild. Maybe it's gonna be more like a scrambled thing. There. Uh, this bubbler died, I don't know. minnows are all freezing up. I wonder if a new battery will do it. Oh yeah, new battery. Okay, so I just need a bigger bubbler that'll last. I need something that'll go a couple days, just to be sure. There we go. That'll give him a little kick. Oof. Got hit by the steam. Oh, there we go. Looks like that cooked up good. Got our spam. Throw that in there. It's looking good. Bit of bacon. Let's see if we can get our... Oh, our egg's got a little bit of a crispy bottom. That should turn out. Oh, that's not even that bit crispy on the bottom. That looks good. Not even crispy at all, hardly. All right. Adobo, a lot of adobo apparently. I didn't mean to put that much on. And a little bit of the old hot sauce. I cannot believe there hasn't been a flag. Not even one little perch or something. 923, we're burning daylight for hours now. And uh, nothing doing, it's still 15 degrees, it's five, five degrees warmer. I can feel it. I can, I can feel it, I need to get my gloves back on. Yeah, wow. So much for a uh, beautiful, beautiful morning bite. 
I've been striking out a lot lately. Gotta work on my game. Though, you can't argue with the ambiance and the warmth of the sleep at night. And, uh, getting all my gear really figured out now for these adventures and stuff. Like, you know, the glamper. The glamper is the ultimate, you know. To be able to fish out of it. And, uh, like that spot I had fished and I caught that fish last night. If I was in the glamper, I could have stayed right there and kept at it. But getting it onto the ice wasn't quite worth it for this experience. I didn't know where I was going to be. I was kind of hoping to camp here. And, uh, you know, going somewhere else where you pull up to a boat launch, haul it off, going with that. It's not really just about catching the fish. Uh, I lost my chopsticks from last night. I'm going to eat with the spatula. <laughs> It's not just about catching the fish, it's, it's about the adventure in general, trying something new, you know? Doesn't matter how many times I failed to catch a fish, each time I've learned a little bit more, don't go back to that spot, or don't go back to that spot at that time of year, or that time of day, or that type of bait. It all adds up to uh, more knowledge. So I'm not disappointed. That really hits a spot on this cold, cold morning little piece of spam and eggs oh almost forgot to say grace thank you lord mm, thank you for this beautiful morning and the coffee and the adventure and bless his food to my body and my time with the girls as i head home in jesus name amen it's never happened before that right when i say grace that the a flag pops but i always think that that would be pretty funny it almost always seems to happen though as I start to sit down to eat my warm meal, one does go off, right? Oh, I felt like I found two pretty awesome things. The single serving of Spam. That's pretty sweet to have for this. And that Jasmine rice. All ready to go. Made a beautiful little fish fry. And let's not forget Krua. Tenting in the winter time? Holy cow, that's amazing. And insulated, packing up as small as it is. I can go to Florida oh, and be cold and sleep good with a little teeny AC unit in it. This is gonna be, it's a game changer, I tell you. They were saying in their little video to try to, you know, bringing it up that camping doesn't have to be miserable being too cold and or too hot and stuff and man they nailed it that is I don't know why somebody else didn't think of that sooner I mean ice shacks I was thinking a couple of years ago during Waterworld like hey you know I'm just gonna start camping with my ice shack during the summertime because it blocks out the, the heat and uh, it blocks out the, the cold in the evening so you're comfy I never did it though because it's such a pain in the neck to haul around in this thing this is perfect don't forget to check out Crua Tents. Links in the description below. This is one hot tent you're not going to want to miss. And if you go right now to the link in the description, you can sign up and win a free Crua Tent. Our drawing will be in the live stream in one week. Well, that pretty much does it. Just a quick little small adventure. Camping out in some pretty darn cold weather. I know you Canadians are like, Oh, that's not cold, eh? You don't know what cold is. But, uh... For the east coast of Maine, this is actually pretty cool. It hasn't been this cold since uh, Amos and I did that uh, that thing in the uh, Arctic Blast. And that was, it's been years since we've had something like that hit us here. So, 10 degrees, super comfortable even when my candle thing went out. And uh, I'm going to pack it up, head on home, grab the girls, and head off to church. <laughs> You can't always get what you want, but you can always choose to be happy with what you got. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you in the next one. Fowler out.
Now, I thought there's probably a pump. Well, that's silly. I forgot it. Yep, a nice little pump. There it is, all pumped up. No big pump I have to bring with me. And this thing, this is my little dry bag pump I just kind of invented, uh, is small enough. I can roll it up, roll it up with the tent, or if I really want to do it, I could just stick it in my back pocket if I shorten the hose. It's so, yeah, if I shorten the hose, I could fit right in my back pocket. I might even be able to pump up uh, like a paddle board on Adventures, because I'm going to Florida. They're gonna set me up with, I think, another one so I can be cool when I'm down in the hot places in my insulated tent with a little teeny uh, portable AC. And or I could be warm when I'm in the cold places. Check them out, Krua, linked in the description below. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next adventure. Fowler out. <laughs> <laughs>